What is this? Newsreel film. It shows us winning the war. Well, we didn't win the war. How did this come to fruition with Amazon? So there was discussions early on about seeing if there was properties we could do together, and you had always presented this as the crown jewel, so to speak. It was a call from Morgan Wandel, who had worked with Frank Spotness before, asked him if there's any passion project that he's been dying to do. Frank offered this one up, um, Morgan read it, and uh, we were shooting less than a year later. You considered this the crown jewel in, 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 your, in your father's work. Why, why this book? I mean, there are many adaptations of his work. There are many variations of it. Why do you think Man in the High Castle? Well, I think he considered it his ground, crown jewel. This was his big swing at literary mainstream. It's less sci-fi than his other books, if you, if you know them. And, and it was important to him. I mean, it says a lot about fascism and as our world is today, um, the threats of fascism. And, and it also is infused with a lot of Asian culture, which was important to him. But there's a degree of polarization. It feels often, I find when I watch it, I feel like you guys are talking about contemporary issues. I think a lot of that is intentional. I know we've had these conversations with Frank, who's um, very interested in reflecting our world in this alternate world. I, I think if he were here, two of the things thematically he talks about in all sort of manifestations are what is reality and, and what is freedom. And I think that one in particular um, has real powerful resonance today. Hey, Harry. See, Kyle. One of the things that's funny about it is, is that old expression came to mind when I, when I was first watching the show, which I love, which was good men are doing bad things for good reasons. And it's kind of like, but that's what all bad men say. None of them think oh, I'm a terrible person. They think I'm, I'm looking at a greater good. And you guys really play that within your characters and the, the dilemmas they have. And I want to get a sense of that. Here's someone who has survived, if not thrived, in abiding by and, and often, um, well, having having partaken in some of the the worst um, sort of atrocities and then at the same time comes to discover that his young son has an affliction that within that community so to speak will render him having to kill him um, because that that is intolerated um, that kind of disability so to speak is is wiped out it's stunning how you've created this world give us a sense as we as we talk about about the production value how you designed this show because I think well, that that is a character unto itself Certainly, our art director and costume designers and all, all of these great people have really made this world believable, and that was so important in creating something that people could really immerse themselves in. The complexity of, of the fact that they have to take us back as an alternative history, they have to take us back to 1962, a world that we have some degree of familiarity with, whether we were alive or not, through through films and through, uh, through television images, but then try to overlay that with assuming that things changed after 1945, what influence of the Reich, what influence of, of the um, Japanese empire would then have on the evolution of every aspect of culture. And it's, it's just interesting to see how those things emerge and what those moments of familiarity mm -hmm. and, and what they mean within the context of this time.